Welcome to Not Entirely Unlike Tea with Christine Collins. Hey there, it's Christine Collins, and we are going to have a look today at a goal or wish or desire that you have that hasn't happened for you yet or you're hoping will achieve in the future. We'll take a little bit of a unique approach to understanding which foundational aspects may be missing that you can instill to get that juicy goal out of the ethers and out into tangible reality. A lot of times when we lose momentum on a goal or a project, we are actually disconnected from the original vision that we had and we've lost touch with that excitement that we had so conjuring up that vision can kind of help give the energy for our journey powering up our plans and the steps that we need to get us there so just briefly what was the goal and what made it so exciting and I'm also curious has anything changed since so since you first created that goal that vision has anything changed? And sometimes that vision will change a little because now you are better informed. You have already walked the path a little bit in terms of being able to see what didn't work in relation to it. And even if you never got started on the goal, that's really good information too. So it's brilliant to be able to look and gather these insights because now it gives us the opportunity to truly up level and update that vision. So if you haven't already done something like this, I also suggest making a little list of everything that you have gotten done, anything noteworthy for you. It's just a matter of recognizing what your time actually did go into, and it's perfectly valid if it was small things like taking care of your health or your home or your family, maybe something like managing meals in a brand new way or making a small improvement somewhere in your life or in your business. It can be so easy for us to forget the things we did do or did finish. So make sure that you are recognizing your accomplishments at the same time that you're acknowledging the pieces that didn't get completed. And those big sweeping achievements are no more important than the small but consistent things that we do. So make sure that you give yourself that recognition for that as well. And we can now release this old feeling because we're going to create something new today. And that is really beautiful and exciting and it's going to feel so good. So I'm curious to know, what do you think is the reason for things not going as you had hoped? You might think that it was because of procrastination, like your mind going in too many directions, or a fear of judgment, or perfectionism, or just inability to even get started in the first place. Or maybe it was an overcommitment to too many different things. While it's fine to kind of notice and observe if you think these are some of the things that played a role, I also encourage that gentleness that you go easy on yourself. We can objectively observe the moments that maybe we would do over without all of that self-shaming about what that means about us as people. And this is the part where there's often a story tucked in there. And I would like to propose that we call it an identity story. Identity stories are about ourselves, but stretch further than just something really general about the world, like money doesn't grow on trees. An identity story is something like, I never get it right, or I always come up with brilliant ideas, but never follow through. So if you're carrying something like that around, you are absolutely not alone. And one in particular that I see really often is along the lines of, well, so-and-so can make that work, but I can't. Or if I only had blank, then I could do it. So it's kind of like, they can have it, but I can't. Or it works for other people, but not for me. Or it's always in the future, but it's never coming now. Our identity stories actually create our behavior and our habits. And the way that we behave and make choices and do things habitually then affects our environment and the world around us and our outcomes. Our reticular activating system in the brain will kind of zoom in on features in our environment that reflect or match our primary focus or belief and actually cause us to notice those things more. So we notice things largely based on what we focus on or believe. And that belief then dictates our behavior, 
which has a really big effect then on the external world and how it relates back to us. So for example, if we're walking around with the belief that I am a person who makes sales from my offer posts or emails, then the actions we perform will line up based on that belief and will behave in a manner befitting someone of that identity story. In contrast, if we have an identity story of I am a person who always gives away too much for free or I am someone who never makes sales, then we also tend to act in a way that corresponds to that belief. And what's even crazier is that that lovely reticular activating system will also continue to seek out confirmation of our existing belief so that the more we believe it and put our focus there, the truer it actually gets. There's a fair amount of neuroscience behind the benefit of these identity stories and how they interplay with neuroplasticity. So our brains have the capacity to sort of reinvent themselves, to change, to grow, to develop. We can learn new skills, we can change our behaviors, we can learn new things. And in doing so, we are forming new neural pathways, new neural connections, and in repeatedly engaging with a new identity story or an existing identity story, we are reinforcing those patterns and those neural pathways. So if we want to do something that we haven't done before, a goal we haven't achieved before, a skill or a task that's new, we have to build the neural pathways that can help us to get there. The same is true for changing a behavior pattern. We're developing the new neural pathways for that new behavior. And at the same time, lessening some of those neural connections between anything we want to release or change or let go of. Our default mode network, our self-narrative ability, the capacity capacity that we have to think about ourselves in terms of a narrative or a story can have a very heavy influence on those neural pathway developments. We can actually change and reshape cognitive biases that are currently in existence for us. So as we internalize the new identity story or the new self-concept, we're both more likely to notice and act upon information that is correlated with that new identity, which will help to further reinforce it. We also have our reticular activating system that filters information based on what we already think is important or what we already believe. And so as we adopt a new identity story, it can help us with kind of programming that reticular activating system to continuously look for data and information and specifically, like more tangibly, opportunities that exist that will support our goal or support that new identity story. It can also help us in terms of our emotional response to various situations. So if we have an identity story that I'm someone who gets up early every day and goes for a run or goes for a swim, if that's sort of embedded in our self-narrative, then even on the days when it's cloudy or we're tired or there's something a little bit off, we're far more likely to keep engaging with that behavior pattern because it's a part of our identity story. Whereas if it's just like something we're trying, oh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see if I can do this. We might be more inclined to be swayed by difficulties and challenges and obstacles that arise. So when we think about that in the context of a goal that you're setting for yourself, and this could be any goal, it could be business related, professional related, it could be a personal goal, it could be a habit change, it could be dietary or exercise related, it could be something to do with behavior patterns or changes. When we have the identity story built, we're a lot less likely to be thrown off track our emotions are embedded into that identity story and it helps us to align more closely with our intentions, desires, and wishes. And then when we have that in place, we also are activating our brain's reward systems, which helps us to reinforce the behaviors that are consistent with what we're wishing for and what we're desiring. So let's just play with that for a moment and try on an identity story as if it were a little hat that you could take on and off. And this is just for practice, just for fun. So identity stories are shaped like this. I am someone who, and you could play with an identity story like I am someone who gets things done. Or if that feels like too much of a stretch, we could just do something really simple and go with I'm someone who loves the color green. 
So now you can just imagine for a little moment that this is your new identity. I am someone who loves the color green. And then have a look at what things might follow from that. What behaviors might follow if this identity story were true? If that was your identity, when it's time for you to select a pen or choose a game piece or buy a new notebook or a new mug, you might be choosing green things. And in performing those behaviors, it directly translates into the world around you and your experience in your home. Things will suddenly be more green everywhere. People will be buying you green things because you are carrying and living out that identity story. And they are actually more pliable than we realize. The cool thing is, thanks to neuroplasticity, we have a gorgeous opportunity to design and adopt new identity stories anytime we want to. And when you change an identity story, it can have huge tsunami-like waves that will continuously ripple out into your behaviors, into your choices, and ultimately into the experience that you have. So for example, you could ask yourself, what identity are you carrying in relation to not getting this goal done? What are you telling yourself about yourself? So is it something only other people can have? Is it always in the future, just a smidge out of reach? Does it feel like it's just a tiny bit impossible? Or has it come to mean something about you, something that doesn't feel good? For example, I never finish things. I always overthink things. I never have a good strategy. I always let the ball drop. I will never be as good as blank. No one will ever buy this. And one thing I notice across all of these examples is that it tends to be very all or nothing thinking, using language like always or never or no one. And then the other noteworthy sign where you're trying to catch out this belief is that it just feels bad. It's not very constructive. It'll sound very bullying, something that you would never say to someone else. Now we know that our habits and behaviors will follow this identity story that we have about ourselves. And when you change that identity story in the sense of I am a person who, then the habits to make it real will follow naturally. So let's look at what do you wish it to be? So some examples here could be things like, I am a person who is successful. I'm a person who meets my goals, who gets what I want, who is loved and supported, who can find a way, or you can get more specific and do things like is earning X dollars, is serving X clients, or is experiencing something specific. This only needs to be a slight up level. It can be a very small shift. It doesn't have to go from zero to a hundred. So if the old belief was, I never can do this, then your up level may be, there's a chance that I could do this. I'm open to the possibility that I could do this. So notice yourself now allowing for the possibility that this new belief is actually viable, that it's possible. And just that little thing alone, you've made a huge transformation from that door being completely closed with the word never, and now you've cracked the door open just enough to let the light in. And when you're making a decision, you can say, now, what would someone who dot 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 choose right now? The next time you're out there taking action, the action will be that much more potent, that much more powerful. It will influence your magnetism and the way that you interact in the world, and it'll help to uplevel your behavior and your choices accordingly. And now maybe you're wondering, how do I keep this going? So the thing is, neuroplasticity is grown between repetition, relaxation, and emotional intensity. The brain loves repetition for building a new neural pathway. So it really helps to have a reinforcement tool to kind of put your up-level beliefs on repeat and maybe even enhance them and take you to that next level that you're wanting. And this is just one of many reasons why I love recorded hypnosis for your up-leveling work because being recorded helps with that repetition side of building new neural pathways. 
And hypnosis has a well-proven record for helping with things like behavior change, trauma, anxiety. You'll often hear it touted for helping to change habits like smoking and eating, as well as helping with physical pain and enhancing performance. And the beautiful thing about hypnosis is that it includes a specific series of statements surrounding the new identity that you're building. It's also much easier to form new neural pathways when we're in the deeper brain waves of alpha and theta, which are like a twilight in between being awake and being asleep. In those deeper states, new neurons are more easily formed, existing ones are renewed, and the old discarded ones will fade. And we can get into those deeper brain waves using tools like hypnosis and yoga nidra. So when you put those two elements together, one, having that repetition of that specially crafted message as a recording, while at the same time, two, being in that deeper brain wave, you get the benefit of both together, which is like a double boost for your neuroplasticity. And this is where having a built-in mindset tool like hypnosis being available on demand really reaches the deeper levels of your subconscious to help you you create that new neural network. When I am designing hypnosis, whether it's a custom hypnosis audio or one of the ready-to-go hypnosis audios that go into my hypnopothecary, I focus on how to best optimize the wiring of those neural pathways for your success and for your desired goal. First, I have a look at the energy of what is wanted. So what is it that you're moving towards? What is it that you deeply desire? And then I use all the power in my training, my master's in hypnosis, neurolinguistics, language, psychology, all my years of understanding human behavior through counseling, through neuroscience, in order to craft the perfect message that can speak to your subconscious so that you can up-level that belief that's tied to your desires and goals. When you're relaxed down into those deeper brain waves, things are more clay-like where we can mold and optimize those internal stories more easily. Hypnotherapists use language in a very specific way, accounting for decision styles, thinking patterns. We know how to design a script that can shift an old stuck story into a beautiful new belief. Even things like tone and inflection are highly specific to subconscious communication. So we work all of that into the picture, writing the script, editing it, recording it, and then I polish it. I add in a touch of soothing binaural music just to make it a really gorgeous journey. And when it's all finished, I add in a dash of Reiki, my own personal magic, and my well wishes for you to have everything you're desiring and for it to be for your highest good. My role is to see the horizon of possibilities that exist for you, to believe in those things for you, and then show you the view so that you can start to believe in it for yourself. So if this is sounding juicier and juicier, then I would like to share with you a couple of ways that you can grab hold of this special magic. So I have a collection of already existing hypnosis audios on a big variety of topics. Everything from what we talked through today with achieving goals and getting results to things like boosting your confidence, health and wellness, stress and overwhelm, sleep and eating, relationships, creativity. There are a lot of choices. And the majority of these are available for individual purchase. And each one is a full recorded hypnosis session that guides you along a beautiful journey and lays those tracks to build the new neural pathways for whatever the goal or desire or focus of that hypnosis. And with this option, you get to download and keep the audio and they will range in length from 12 to about 20 minutes. So it's very easy to fit it into your day. And if you just want access to all the hypnosis all the time, you can also become a member of my Hypnopothecary, which is a monthly membership that gives you access to listen to the entire collection through an online portal. And it includes all of my hypnosis audios and that collection, as well as Yoga Nidra journeys 
There are some EFT tapping videos, and there are some other mini meditations and visualizations. You can cancel on your own at any time. You don't have to contact me or anything like that. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. And I am really excited to see what you create with this new identity. And I wish you a totally magical and creative rest of your day. Thanks for listening. This is Christine Collins at transformcreate.com.